We now come to April 4th, AD 33. It's a Saturday and it's really a day of silence. The Bible simply doesn't give us much information about what happened on this day. The disciples are, are laying low, perhaps fearful that they might meet the same end as Jesus. And Jesus' body lay in the tomb, wrapped in a shroud, linen cloth. But how did Jesus, who normally would have been buried in a, a simple shallow grave in the ground because he was a poor man, how did he end up in the rich family tomb of Joseph of Arimathea? And where was his spirit? We know where his corpse was, but where was the soul of Jesus Christ? How should we think about this quiet day, this day of waiting after Good Friday in anticipation of Easter Sunday? Joseph of Arimathea goes to Pilate and requests that uh, he be allowed to take Jesus' body uh, to give him a proper burial. And this he complied with the stipulation in the Hebrew scriptures in the book of Deuteronomy that a uh, person who is crucified uh, must be buried on the same day. The rabbinic law also uh, stipulated that a convicted criminal must be buried separately. Uh, from others. And so the Gospels tell us that uh, Joseph had this family tomb, a uh, new tomb that uh, had not yet held any, any corpses. But we're told that he, he uh, took a linen cloth and, uh, and, and wrapped uh, Jesus' uh, body in it and then uh, put it in this uh, freshly cut tomb. What we know about, uh, about tombs in first century Palestine, especially in, in Jerusalem and the vicinity, is that they were uh, often cut into the rock uh, like caves into uh, a slope, which would have been fairly labor intensive and expensive and, and, and so for the most part limited to, to wealthy families. Yet another fulfillment of scripture uh, since Isaiah said that uh, Jesus, uh, the Messiah's uh, grave, would be with the wealthy. Where Jesus was during the Saturday between his death and his resurrection on the Sunday is not an easy question to answer. Uh, I think at the end of the day, the Bible's not altogether clear about that. A lot of people turn to the first Peter 3 passage where, where Peter talks about Christ and spirit going and preaching to spirits who are in prison. Uh, and traditionally a lot of people have thought, well that refers to Jesus between his death and resurrection, uh, going to Hades, proclaiming the victory he had won, uh, even perhaps proclaiming the gospel to people who had died so they would have a chance to respond to uh, the grace of God in Christ. My own view, and it's a complicated and controversial issue, uh, is that 1 Peter 3 is rather talking about Jesus at his ascension, proclaiming his victory over evil spiritual beings. Uh, I think that's probably the direction most contemporary scholars are going in interpreting the text. If that's true, then we really don't have any New Testament evidence that Jesus went to Hades or went to hell between his death and resurrection. And perhaps our, our best guess is that Jesus was in the presence of the Father on the Saturday. He tells the thief on the cross that he would be together with him in paradise that day. And our best guess, and it's not much more than that then, is that Jesus was indeed in the presence of the Father uh, before, of course, his body was raised on, on Easter Sunday morning.